Shalom. All praises to the Heavenly Father, Hatun Apukuya. Praise be to the Earthly Mother, the Pachamama, and all of her earthly angels, the Huaka. Praise be to the Holy Spirit, the Kahe, in the name of Hamashiach, Matzah the Lamb, unification to the nation. So guys, this is another video that I wanted to release today. And I wanted to discuss the topic of quote-unquote magic. Now, the Christian church and whomever, they have pretty much um, demonized the use of quote-unquote magic. But what it really is, is not magic. It's the element of righteousness. The elements of righteousness is using the watchers. I mean, there's nothing evil about that. You know, and in fact, let me try to sh let me try to get that. That's one thing I forgot. OK, no, I should have it, actually. Now, I'm going to share this. So this is. Well, what? Oh. I don't remember what uh, chapter this is. Let me get that first. Well, I'm looking for it. Uh, okay, so this is First Aki chapter ten, verse eighty-nine and ninety. Now, shortly after she departed, she is talking about Mary, uh, the mother of the Messiah. Naomi, having heard the news that he was risen, sought her mother. For she looked after him and she desired the news to comfort her. But Mary could not be found. And it took her three days to discover she had gone to Sikaka and her children feared something had happened to their mother. But she was happily living and walking among the the Air Kadeshoi and Sikaka. And Aki saw she was like unto Typhera, and she liked to make bowls of pottery for the people of Sikaka to eat with. And she would go a walking, and the people there would see her upon a high uh, prince, uh, uh, precipil. No, I said that totally wrong. Anyway, in the evenings, praying her evening prayers. And wonder with amazement how she got herself away up there. And she loved to walk with the Air Kadeshoi among the willows. And she would collect wood with her donkey. And her hair was all white. And she could still dance the Song of Eve. And she blessed the altar in Sikaka. And she became the mother of the dance. And those who were strangers who passed by thought when they would see her that she was a wild woman. Does that sound familiar? That sounds like a so-called uh, witch living in a tree, right? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Um, skipping down to his footnote. Uh, Willows are given the feeling in their creation by Messiah to feel being intermixed with the Most High to give security. Mary used willows as an element of righteousness to be hidden from Semihaza during the last 10 years of her life. And we're going to go over in another video. I don't know if I'm going to release it today, maybe tomorrow. But we're going to go over the fact that uh, the willow tree is, is an element of protection, right? That's an element of protection that the ancients used that the natives, the native peoples still use to this day as an element of protection against wickedness. So we're going to get into that. Whoops. Jesus of Nazareth, a first century Harry Potter. Now, this is a de depiction of so-called Jesus with a wand. Jesus raising the dead with a, a wand. Roman catacomb, third century. When J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter books hit the shelves and became a global hit, American fundamentalist Christians took note and reacted with a lot of fear, uh, demonization, and astoundingly idiotic con condemnation that was rare even for their various denominational demographics. 
There is perhaps nothing more threatening than a rival mythology, especially when it's well publicized and successful. The prostinations, protest, protestations, um, I'm sorry, bro, and calls to ban the books were followed by entire websites devoting to instructing Christians how to respond to witchcraft and demonology as a pop phenomenon. Demonology. It backfired and the Potter juggernaut paved uh, right over all that evangelical evangelical silliness. With the films that followed, Rolling became the most successful franchise since Disney, giving their way these Western alleged Early Christian sects would have certainly have mounted a uh, belated sequel to the Salem witch trials. Alas, pesky uh, secular laws, predominantly uh, dose homegrown Puritan torches and minimize uh, imi imitation of ISIS styled iconoclasm, which hardly negates in-house suspicion of an aggression towards imagery. As such detailed here, and as you can see, another uh, photo that's colorized of so of the Messiah using a wand to raise someone from the dead. Now all this, and it's funny because I had, I had this um this image in my head of making a wand for myself. Now I haven't done all that yet, but what I have done is I have gathered certain woods, um, for instance, the willow tree i don't i haven't looked into the other trees yet so i don't know what the other trees do but i do know that the willow tree is the one that uh gives protection right so that's the one that i try to carry around with me i keep in my house right i'm not going through all of the different uh deep level things on what you're supposed to do with it but i will eventually i definitely will eventually and Let's check out what the Druids were doing, because the Druids were the ones who were known for having wands and things of that sort. That's how, like, man, it's always been in our faces, but we just really didn't want to see it. It's always been in our faces. As I said, he was in uh, Ireland and England at some point in time. He had to have been. With what with the things that he teaches and what he knows, even even uh some of the things that he says is very similar to the druids there are different uh similarities between the druids and the essenes so that stuff's all very interesting when the topic of wands and sacred books within druidism comes up most people immediately think of what we know from continental and british sources understandable since the british model is the most popular i think though that there is more than enough evidence from the irish if we look at both the ancient and folkloric sources to give us a viable system for modern usage. I also think those of us who are Irish focused polytheists, especially Druids, are better served looking to Irish sources when possible rather than using the more common but less applicable British models. From top to bottom, a birch wand with a crystal point, handmade, and two wands from Spirit of Old a hazel wand with a skull carved at one end and a blackthorn wand with a bark left on the handle. So there are different sorts of wands that one can use, that one can make. All of the elements are supposed to be amplifiers. So you can pray to the Most High for something, right? But certain elements will amplify your prayers. They make it stronger. That is what feminine energy is. Masculine energy is the creation, but feminine energy is the amplification. So you can th like, all right. So for example, with only feminine energy, you pretty much only have a multiplier, but you have the value of zero. So you can have times a hundred, but there's still nothing to multiply. So it's still going to be zero. Now, with only masculine energy, you can have the value of a 10, but that's as far as you're going to get. You're only going to get to a 10. You have to merge the two. And then you'll have 10 
times 100, right? Then you get 1,000. So you have to merge the two. You use your prayer. You know how to pray, right? You know what to pray. You know what to say. That's the masculine energy. The feminine energy is the energy of the earth. Now, what element are you going to use, right? While praying. That's how you mingle the two and get your power. So all this stuff, man, about what what uh what witchcraft is, uh, you need to do more research. And we're going to go over in the next video that I'm going to release today. We're going to go over the fact that you are the book. You are the book. And I'm not letting any Gentile tell me what to do because we wrote the book. The Most High did not come down and write the book. We were inspired by the Most High and we wrote the book. And we wrote certain things that were beneficial to us at a certain time period. But we literally are the book. We wrote the book. So I'm not going to be handcuffed to a book. We can get our knowledge from the Father. That's who we are. We are the intermediaries for everyone else. I don't give a damn what a Gentile has to say to me. I don't give a damn what a Gentile has to say to me. They should be seeing what uh, they can get, what crumbs they can uh, get that falls out of my mouth. I could care less about what their opinions are. You have to understand your order. You have to understand where you're supposed to be. And stop letting people who don't know what they're talking about tell you where you're supposed to be. So let all these people talking about witchcraft, this, Kabbalah, that. Bro, to hell with them. Who cares? Who cares what they have to say? They don't even know what they're talking about. I released a book about a week ago, and it's the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. And I said, you know, everything that you do before you do it, just make sure you pray about it. But I'm not telling you not to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even uh, uploaded the book. But that wouldn't have been right to not upload the book. It could help so many people. So it's not about the book, bro. It's just the book. How you use the information is a different, is, is, is different, bro. Right. There's a good way and a bad way how to use things. There's a there's a good way and a bad way how to use the elements of righteousness. You could use it to protect people, to enhance your prayers, or you could use it to hurt people, a.k.a. witchcraft. And it's the same thing with Kabbalah or anything else. There are different ways how you say things. There are different things that you do. There's an order. Right. That's the masculine energy. You can't only get by with one or the other. You have to merge the two in righteousness. So let me show you some pictures real quick. There you go. He showed in multiple pictures with a wand of some sort. Multiple pictures. It's not just one. It's a lot of different pictures.